evening and welcome to TL Physics. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to talk about centripetal force. Not centrifugal, centripetal. And it's important that you don't make that mistake in an exam. <coughs> so, in previous videos I have spoken about angular velocity and I've also spoken about tangential speed or velocity and the acceleration. And just to recap, this acceleration is the thing that is causing you to go back into the circle. A Newton's second law states, for that to happen, for there to be an acceleration, there must be a resultant force. And that resultant force is a force acting towards the center of the circle. So as you can see here, this is my velocity vector, okay? So this is my velocity vector, and this is my acceleration. So I'm going to be accelerating inwards, and can you see this is parallel with the force, it's in the same direction as the force, so my acceleration is, is in the same direction as force, and that is Newton's second law, that I will accelerate in the direction of my resultant force. And that is why this velocity, the speed, will stay the same. And the reason being is there is no force acting in that direction at all, in, in this direction. So this velocity will stay the same, but the object's particle is feeling an acceleration inwards, so it's always changing direction. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about this force. I'm actually going to use Newton's second law to assist me. So as you can see here, I've got a diagram. I've got my omega, and that is my angular speed. I've got my v and my tangential speed here. And my acceleration here is working in the same direction as my force. And centripetal force always acts to the centre of the circle. So the centripetal always acts to centre of circle. Okay. So, I'm actually going to use Newton's second law. And that says if a resultant force is acting, it will act in the it will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force, also known as F equals MA. And that's quite a well-known formula there. But the thing is, is the acceleration, you can use F equals MA. However, in circular motion, we have some important centripetal acceleration formulae. We have acceleration is V squared over R, and we have also got omega squared R. So we can replace this A with mv squared over r, and that's a very powerful formula for gravitational fields, or we can use m omega squared r. So you can use any formula here to work, uh, to work out um, the force that's acting. So let's do an example, okay? And I'm going to say that an object, okay, so an object of 10 kilograms uh, has a tangential speed of 15 meters per second in a circle of 3 meters. Okay? And what I'm asking here is, what is the centripetal force? Okay. So the centripetal force is the resultant of all the forces acting on the object. So I haven't got any much information from that. I don't know what forces are causing the circular motion, but I can calculate the resultant force. So... Let's use I've mv squared over r. So f equals mv squared over r. So I've got 10 times 15 squared over 3. And if I put that into my calculator, 10, oops, 10 times 15 squared divided by 3, I get an answer of 750 newtons. So let's use the other one. I'm actually going to find what omega is. So I know that V equals omega R. So omega is V over R. So I've got 15 over 3. That's 5, um, sorry, 5 rads per second. Okay. 
And then I'm going to stick that into that formula here. So I've got F equals m omega squared r. So I've got 10 times 5 squared times by 3. So 5 squared is 25. 25 times 10 is 250. 250 times by 3, of course, is 750 newtons. So as you can see here, I could use, if I was given the information in omega, I could use it. If I was given it in meters per, uh, meters per second, so tangential speed, I can also use it as well. Okay, so this object here is doing five radians per second, okay, which is just under two pi, so just under a full circle every second, okay. Um, this here is an example of using the uh, form, uh, force. What I'm going to be doing in my next videos is talking about very specific situations with horizontal circles, with vertical circles, and bits in between where you actually have to start looking at what is causing this resultant force and then calculating that resultant force and then information from that. But this here, all I'm doing is finding the centripetal force. I'm finding the force, the resultant force, that is actually causing this emotion. I don't know where it's coming from, but I know what the resultant force is. And that is centripetal force.